Hi there, David here from DavidDumeAudio.com, and in this video, we'll be designing a wood shattering sound effect. When designing sound effects, it's a good idea to start and to lean towards what might be the most obvious part of the sound. So for in this instance, it might be wood, so it might sound something like this. And that's good, but it gets pretty boring. There's not much happening. There's not much characteristic to the sound and it doesn't really do it justice for what's happening on the screen. So what I like to do is to think about and come up with other characteristics that I want to have in my design. So if, for instance, I might want something like a ripping sound, a tearing sound, maybe some crackling sound, maybe even an, an explosion sound to signify the explosion of the wood here. But what's interesting is that all of these different characteristics don't need to be wood samples. You can actually layer other samples that have these characteristics in with the wood to make the final sound. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's jump into our session and I'll show you exactly how I redesigned this sound effect. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper. And just for context, let's have a listen to the original sound and then we'll go over the redesign. So that's from the original game audio. Now let's have a listen to the redesign. All right, now, like I mentioned before, a lot of these samples were wood, and I had even had some designed wood samples and designed wood sounds that I put in here, but a lot of them were not wood-based at all. So let's have a listen here. Let's go through each individual layer, and I'll show you guys how I designed it and how I put it together. All right, so like I played before, this is the first sample that I went to, and it's just a wood sample, and this was kind of my starting position. All right, so that's what, what I like to do. It's a, it's a good starting place to just kind of base your sound off of. Right? There's no processing or anything on here. It's just wood. After that, I layered another sound here. It's a bit more complex, a lot more wood sounds, and this is just to go with all the wood falling on the ground here. So together we have this. And what you'll also notice here is that they are offset of each other. And this is because it's hitting two different barrels. So like the first one here is maybe this first barrel and the second hit here is maybe the second barrel. So when you hear them together, they don't sound all like they're coming from the same place. Right, next, after that, I wanted to have like wood pieces falling on the ground. So that's what that is. Next, I have this layer here. And this is what I'm talking about for these design sounds. So this was a designed wood impact when I had a bit of processing on it. So let's take it off. This is the original sound, which is fine, but I really wanted to have that high crackle sound, right? So let's put these on here. What did I have? I had uber loud here and I just really cranked up the, the highs here and also the clipper. So just with that, I get a lot of that high crackling sound because without it, with the other layers that we had so far, it's very mid and, and low heavy. And we don't have much of that, those higher frequencies. So I really want to fill that out. And finally, I just took this and I just cut off some of the lows because I didn't need it because it, they're already t being taken up in these other samples here. So all together now with this higher crackling sound. All right, so this one was actually based off of a wood sample, this high crackle sound. But this one here was not at all. So let's have a listen. Right, and this is just an impact sound that I had designed and just kind of dropped in here. So I'm gonna take off M transform here. This is what it sounds like. Right, so it's just an impact that I was, I was, I was thinking maybe just like it would fit if it, when the ax hits the, the wood, it just, you get this deep sound. But what I ended up doing is putting on M transformer here. And what I did here, uh, I used the frequency shaping preset here, and I just brought up this graph here. I put it up towards emphasis. I'm not sure what it does, but it kind of brings out a lot of those higher frequencies and it brings out more noise to the sound. So now it's a lot more noise based and it's a lot higher frequency based. So I have a lot of the mids and lows in these top three layers and then these next two here are upper layers. So now all together, this is what we have. Now, of course here, you'll notice here, I have other uh, processing on the, on the group. So I'm gonna take these off and let's go through these one at a time. All right, so the first thing is just to put on recenter because I wanna make sure all the sounds were right in the middle and there was no movement around the stereo field or no sound that was more left or more right, right? So everything's right in the center. Next, I added an EQ here just to, to cut out some of the lows. Right, so without it, it's very, very bassy and with it, a lot more tame. Next, I added uber loud here just to bring out some of the mids. You see here, I'm also using the clipper and, and balancing it with the wet and dry. So without it, with it. Next, I added M transformer. Here I'm doing a bit of frequency shifting. And also again, for the frequency shaping preset, I'm also moving the, the dot on this graph here. So it's a bit higher. And you'll see here, I bring the wet dry pretty far down so that it's not affecting it too much. So without it, with it, it's a bit brighter. All right, so with that, we have a pretty good starting point for a wet. And you'll see here, uh, as I mentioned before, you had some wood samples and you also have non-wood samples. Next one here that I wanted to add is another one that wasn't a wood sample. And this is it here. 
right? And this is a kind of a crackling sound. That's what I was going for. I wanted to feel like the wood was sh- uh, ripping, like some, some sort of ripping or crackling sound from little piece of wood snapping out, right? So this is what this is doing. So let's have a listen to what it sounded like. This is the original sample here, right? Again, another uh, bass impact sound that I had created. And let's bring on here my EQ. I just cut out the lows because I just didn't need those for, because the, again, the frequencies were already taken up in the other layers. And then next, again, M transformer here, frequency shaping, put it up. All right, for the next layer, I wanted to have more of an explosion layer. Uh, and this was a design sound that I had designed quite a few years back for a game. And I just kind of dropped it in here because I, I thought it could fit. So let's have a listen to it. Right, you have this tonal element and you also have this explosion in and ripping element to, the, to this sound effect here. So I thought it worked well for this sound. So let's have a listen here uh, without any processing on it. All I did, it's very wide by the way, so that's why I put on recenter here just to kind of tame everything, put everything in the center. I also added another EQ here, which I'm not even sure if it's doing anything. It's not even doing anything, don't need it there. All right, so, so far, this is what we have. All right, so a lot fuller sound and we're starting to get somewhere. Finally, I just wanted to add some more debris, more wood debris, so they, this, this is what these final two layers are doing here. Right, you can see here I'm using quite a bit of processing and I think it's similar processing to what I had before just to keep the same kind of tone, the wood tone uh, similar throughout the sound. Without it, it sounds like this. Very bassy, I just didn't need all that. I had recentered to center the sound. I actually put it a bit to the right so that it's more for the right barrel. Some EQ to cut the lows. Again, same uber loud setting from before and same M transformer setting from before again to keep the same tone matching between the layers. Finally, we have this layer. And this one is pan on the left. So the first one here was pan on the right. This one's pan on the left. So this one's for the left barrel. And the EQ is just cutting about out a bit of the lows. So all together now, all the layers together, this is what we have. All right, so that was pretty good, but I had two different barrel hits that I was creating. This was the second one here. All right, so I wanted to create something that was similar here. What I did is I just grabbed my all, all the, these files here. I just copied and pasted them over. And what I did is I added two different layers for this second hit so that it's a bit different. And these are the two layers. So this is the first one here. And this is just for the swing of the ax. All right, so you have the swing and then you have the hit. And you'll see here, this is a technique that is quite common is to cut out some, like, some of the transit to let impacts and all the transits cut through. So I don't need to have any sound here when the transits are hitting. So I just cut it out completely and then I bring it back in here. So on its own, it sounds kind of funny, but it really fits in well with the other layer. So if we put it in context, right, it just helps to have all the transits punch out really, really hard. All right, and then the final layer was this one here. Again, this is just a wood impact sound just to make it a bit different because now we have three barrels and I added some transit shaping just to shape the sound a little bit. And that's it. So now all together, sounds kind of similar. You'll notice they're still different. And the reason for that is because what I did is I just grabbed all these sounds that were similar to the first impact sound here. And what I did is I load up LKC Variator. This is a free script, by the way and it just randomizes certain parameters of your audio files. So I did, I ran LKC Variator using pitch, tape stretch, and rate. Just click mutate, and then it, it randomizes those parameters. And as you can see here, uh, you can see that the pitch and the rate here were changed uh, for each of the samples. So all a little bit. And by doing that now, the sounds don't feel the same. They don't sound the same because they're not the same, right? So you have a bit of randomization, plus you have the two separate files here at the bottom, and that's enough to, to make it sound very different. So let's have a listen to both in context. All right, so I hope you found that useful and valuable and that you can now go and hopefully think about other sounds that have similar characteristics to what you are trying to create. Uh, I think that's a really valuable way to think about sound design is to think about uh, sounds that have similar characteristics, find those, layer them together and see if it works within the sound design that you're trying to create. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below and just a reminder of uh, that free guide in the description below. That's it. I'll see you in the next video.